everybody and welcome to this first uh, tutorial of many to come. Um, it actually took me uh, a crazy amount of time to shoot the video. I thought it was gonna be a good idea to uh, explain what I was doing uh, as I was doing it. In fact, it turned out to be a huge amount of time for the editing. So I'm gonna be shooting straight forward for the next ones and uh, just adding my voice uh, on voiceover. Uh, that's the lesson I learned. Uh, now I'm uh, finishing this. I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, going to show you how to install the pins on the Profi Holder Mini. Uh, that being said, it's exactly the same technique on any Profi Holder. There are many ways uh, of doing it. I'm going to do it using the Profi Board as the support for the pins, which is basically uh, accessible to anyone because if you have a profi holder it means you have a profi board and that's the strict minimum you could use another holder uh, to do the trick uh, sometimes it works uh, more easily but in the end this is the universal technique i hope you enjoyed this video guys and i see you very soon what i'm going to need here my low drain pins my high drain pins my separator my profi board because it's going to give me the exact length uh, at which to cut the pins and then well, I'm going to need it because the profi holder is just a useless piece of junk if you don't add it to a profi board. The profi holder is just some way of making the wiring more logical. And that's it, cutting pliers, a small pair of tweezers and a grabbing plier and of course my iron so first things first i cannot go first with the high power pins because they touch the mosfets and that's actually a problem it gives me a bad sandwich and can actually twist the pins like this which is going to give me problems afterwards to connect so I'm going to leave them out of the way and I'm going to go first, sort of all this. So I just need to make sure of where to put what. All the power lines must be in high drain, which means all those six pads here, LEDs two, three, four, five, and the two negative pads, plus the LED one and six, and the battery positive those need a hydrogen pin if you don't lose any pin in the battle you can put the last one in the ground right here it's going to give you uh, a nice uh, way of balancing the profi board uh, to sandwich the pins so those three are going to need pins I go along, I check what I need, and if there are a group of pins, I let them group because it makes things easier. Then I'm going to go switch 3 and 5 volts. So those are two solo pins. There and there. I cannot put the switch one pin at the at this time because it will not fit between the two pins with the guides so to make sure i have no problem i leave them for after then all those are the high drain pins and then i go to the other side so let's go to the other side just like this at this time I'm going to work vertically because it keeps my pins inside. I check here and I have to put one out of two pins every time. So I'm going to separate those. The last group I will have are the two speaker pads. So I'm going to keep a group and then I go individual. 
And there I go. One every two holes, I put one low drain pin. Once I have all those pins inside, I'm just going to take my profit board and aim those pins at the holes. If you don't get it like I just did, don't worry. I just got very lucky. Usually I have to adjust the stuff uh, a few dozen times until I get it right. So my sandwich, looks fine i'm just going to use some electrical tape so i can just keep that in place and there we go so you see the good thing is that by keeping the guides and sandwiching them with the profi board i actually make sure that my pins are quite perpendicular to the pcb plane which is exactly what I need. Now, what I want is for those pins to just get at the same level as the profi holder to have it nice and neat. Just leave it a little bit out, not much, just half a millimeter or less. I push those, I'm happy. There we go, I can feel, I feel this one actually a bit too much. There you go. Yeah, still too much. There I am. Check, check. I can feel it. I'm gonna push you. Maybe I push this one a little too low. Take your time, find the right spot where it will be perfect. And that's it. The profi holder is not about being quicker, it's about being a bit easier to have a neat install. I can feel the little legs just pushing out. I am ready to solder. As always, protect your airways. I cannot turn on the ventilation because of the vibrations to the camera, so I'm using a mask, a respiratory mask. There we go. I just want to apply some heat to the pad, then melt some solder in it, and that's it. Why do we heat the pad? It's because we want the solder melted to keep being melted a little bit and go inside the hole to fill all the gaps and uh, make a complete connection inside that pad. See how it drips once it's melted. That's what you want to see. Be careful not to put too much solder because if you do, you're gonna bridge some pads and that is gonna make shorts in the circuit and prevent it from operating as it should. So that's it, you see? There's not a huge amount of solder, just the necessary minimum. Once I have this, I will get those guides out. You can have one where the plastic just melted a little bit, no problem. You just put your finger or something that will not scratch the surface of the holder as close to that as possible to avoid bending the PCB and then you go and you can push a little harder but they should always come out you see you can see how good the solder melted and it went all the way through to make that neat connection this means we are fully connected between the pad and the pin. That's what we want. Not too much, obviously, because it's going to push the separator up and uh, make things trickier to have the profi, well, horizontal and all. But we want a little solder through that hole. 
to ensure a proper connection. Now that I did this, I'm going back to the interstice to put the last pins I need, the last low drain pins. So I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, six individual pins. I have two, I need four more. You have extra pins we give you. Always keep them assembled. It's easier to cut them if you have a piece like a bar in the hand. If you only have one alone, well, it's easier to lose them and it's harder to manipulate them. So there I go, interstice. You see, I come from the outside. I aim at the hole and then I put it straight and use gravity to actually let it slide in. Check. There I am. I bring back the profi. As I told you before, it's quite uncommon to have the pins fit perfectly right the first time. So you need to do some arrangements. Like this, you see, I go upside down and now I just can guide those pins inside the hole without them falling again in the wrong direction. And there we go. I close the sandwich back to push the pins to the surface a bit too much you can see it's a bit too much because it's not at the same level as the others and there we go i should be all set for the low drain then i go for the high drain as always, when you pull the guides out, it's a good test. If your pin holds steady in place, doesn't move, it means your soldering was good and you have the guarantee that it will do its job electrically. So there we have a nice forest of pins. And now for the high powers. So LEDs, 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 LED, negative positive and the last ground that's exactly what we want let's go we need three three and then individual ones so a triplet here there we go another triplet and then yeah maybe i should have gone with the individual ones first would have been easier lead lead and for the last one to make sure i'm gonna use the surface of the table as you can see there we go so i'm gonna put the hard ones first this is the positive lead lead ground and then the triplets well this is done i still will have my mosfet problem but the fact that the rest of the pins are all already well soldered will give me some stability that i couldn't have had if I had gone first for the high drain. So that's a lesson I learned because I used to go first for the high drain and it was actually not that much of a good idea. And there we go. I think I'm inside everywhere. Let's see, can I push? Yeah, I should be able to, yes, nice. So you see, it's now inside. 
The profi is not completely straight, but that's not a problem because the plastic guides are. They're completely fully pushed to the bottom. I'm gonna go now and push those pins to the surface as we always do. There we go. All nice at the surface. Good thing is with all those soldering you're gonna do on the profi holder, which is much easier to solder than the profi board. Uh, that is for the first run. At least I haven't tried the other runs, but you get the practice you need to be precise enough afterwards because afterwards you want to avoid touching and hitting the MOSFETs and other components because that would damage the profi board. That's what makes soldering the profi board hardcore at the time because the the board is so small that you will most likely touch at some point a component and uh, take the risk of damaging the board. Note that since they're smaller, the guides from the hydrogen pins are harder to get out, especially the triplets. You need to be very careful with those. Take your hold as near as possible to your pliers. Even use your own finger like this to rely on it. And there we go. So there we have our forests of pins. And now I'm gonna finish the job by putting the separator, putting the profi in place and mark with a permanent marker where on those pins I need to cut to have the pins exactly at the surface of the pads of the profi board. You see how the separator has been designed to accommodate the MOSFETs and have the profi board as close to the profi holder as possible. So this last part is quite easy and straightforward. You take your permanent marker and you mark those pins for decapitation, beheading. There I am. Last thing, need to cut those pins and I will be through. And there we are. Pim, pim, pim. Look how close those pins got. That's exactly what you want. Well, see you guys very soon. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial video. And uh, I will keep them coming.